everyone. My name is Billy Jo Deal and I work with the Oregon Department of Transportation. Uh, I'm out here today standing in front of a truck that I normally take with me when I drive to events or drive to schools uh, where I may ha maybe have seen many of you. Uh, but I wanted to show you where I usually work. Um, some of the days I work out of this building, which is our maintenance station for Baker. You'll see a lot of pickups out here from a lot of our guys that work for ODOT. Um, and in the wintertime, in those other bays, you'd see a lot of snow plows and other pieces of equipment. We've got some big trucks in there right now. But like most of you who have had to finish your school year from home, I have also been working from home. I work for the Transportation Safety Division of ODOT. And what I made to show you guys is a map of the state. So in the state, we have the state broken up into five different regions. Uh, the pink one is one, and then two, three, four, and five. I'm the Transportation Safety Division, um, Transportation Safety Coordinator for Region 5, which is this large part of the state right here. In Salem, which is over here in Marion County in blue, in Salem we have program managers that work specifically in all of the areas in blue. So we have someone who focuses on distracted driving, we have someone that focuses on speeding, drowsy driving, pedestrian safety, bike safety, all of the pieces that you see listed in blue on the poster. Um, within each region, so there are five regions, there are five transportation safety coordinators like me. Um, as a traffic safety coordinator with the safety division in ODOT, the biggest overall problem that we work to solve is how do we reduce the number of people who die or are seriously injured every year on the roadways in Oregon? So if you'll notice, there's also numbers uh, on this poster. So what those numbers represent are people, uh, and they are people that have died on the roadways in 2019. So in 2019, our data has told us that we had 504 people total die in the state of Oregon on, um, caused by traffic crashes. 44 of those people that died, died in Region 5, so in Eastern Oregon that I cover. Three of those people in 2019 died in Baker County. So those are some of the numbers we look at. This is a really big question and it's a big problem that we need to solve. In my position, we review all of the data that's collected statewide and then we focus on specific reasons people die or are seriously injured in our area of the state. And then we work with partners in each community which sometimes involves law enforcement and schools. Um, to talk to students in the community about each of these blue programs. So while Salem has staff that work in each one, the region coordinators work in all of these in our regions. It's important as regional traffic safety coordinator that I'm organized, I pay attention to detail, I have the ability to work on many projects at one time because every time I pick up the phone, um, somebody wants to call me sometimes and talk about bike safety and then 10 minutes later I'll get a call about work zone safety. So I have to be able to organize myself and organize my time. Um, I use a lot of different software in my job um, to do that and I have to write a lot of grants. Um, I, so I have to have good writing skills. Um, I have to work well with the public. Um, that can mean one-on-one -on -one in meetings, it can be over the phone, or it can be giving presentations or working at an event. Um, specific to STEM though, for science, we study a lot of human behavior, which in my job means focusing on a lot of these things here, because a lot of our crashes are caused by human behavior. Choosing to speed, choosing to not wear your seatbelt, choosing to drive after you've been drinking. That's all human behavior and those are things that we focus on. And then the E in STEM, I work with a lot of engineers around road projects. If there's a safety specific issue, a lot of times they'll pull me in to be able to work on some of that safety outreach in the engineering realm. There's tons of math. It's just like there's all these numbers on here, we do a lot of work with math to figure out what percentage of the crashes occurred in our area of the state. Are we overrepresented? Have we had more crashes than seems normal? So we do a lot of math. Um, and one of the areas specifically that I work really hard in, where maybe you've seen me in the community, is working and educating families about the importance of everyone in the car wearing their seatbelts and keeping children in car seats and booster seats as long as possible. And that's kind of what we're gonna focus on a little bit here today. I would like you to meet Sally. Sally is our helper today. She's uh, been buckled up in her seat. She is um, six years old and she's four feet tall. Um, 
Oregon law says that kids should be in a booster seat until they're eight years old or four foot nine and they can appropriately fit in a seat belt. So let's see if Sally meets those things. Um, first of all, she's six, so she's too young. And if she's only four foot tall, she doesn't fit that requirement. But let's take a look at our, at our safety belt fit test. Um, her back needs to be against the vehicle seat. So her back is up against the vehicle seat. The shoulder belt needs to be between her, to be between her neck and her shoulder, just as it's showing here in the picture. Um, if we look here at Sally, I don't know if you can come in close and look a little bit. Sally's seat belt is way up on her neck. And I don't know if you have been riding in a seat before and had the seat belt cut into your neck right in here and it kind of chokes you out. So that piece doesn't work well for Sally. So her seat belt is not appropriate on her, on her neck. Um, the lap belt needs to lay right across her thighs and not across her belly. So that's not too horrible. It's, it's down on her thighs. If it was way up here, maybe some of you have had your seat belts up across your belly and you want to make sure it's down on your thighs, not up on your belly where you, can, you could have some internal damage in a crash. Her knees need to be bent at the edge of the seat. So if we are to make sure that her bottom is all the way back against here, um, her knees would be here. Good thing she's a little doll. Um, her knees would be here. So they're not, because she's a doll and she's so movable here, we can kind of make them go that way right over the seat. But in order for her knees to be where they should be appropriately, her back slides down, her seat belt gets more inappropriate up here, and this slides up on her belly. So her knees are not completely where they should be. Um, if you meet all of those requirements as a kiddo, and you can stay that way for the duration of the trip. So if you're gonna go to all the way to LeGrand and you can sit like that all the way to LeGrand, then you're good to go. But let's just see, let's just see how Sally measures up with our booster bar. So we said she's four foot tall. Her booster bar is at four foot nine, which is the height that we really want you to be before you move out of the booster seat. So Sally, is way below um, and again I said she's six but uh, she's got quite a ways to go and a, and a lot of kiddos um, even if they're this tall at six years old which is actually a pretty tall six-year-old don't grow that much in two years I've actually taken this bar to several events and I have personally never met a four foot nine eight-year-old yet I'm sure they're out there but I've never met any my daughters were both Ten before they hit this um, this this uh, re requirement before they were at least four foot nine. So they were in their boosters till they were after ten years old, and uh, they're pretty tall for their age. They're some of the tallest kids in their class. So, and we are going to set her up woo, to be safer in the car. Okay, right, so she's sitting up higher. She's sitting up taller. Some of these boosters have this nice little routing piece right here. And there we go. Got Sally boosted up a little bit higher. Has her seat belt where it's supposed to go. All right, looks much better. So she's much better and she's so much safer. I wanna tell you how much I love my job. Um, I love my job more than just about anyone else you're gonna meet. I do this work because I'm really passionate about families, working in the community and about safety. My job allows me to work in so many important areas that have touched my life personally, um, and they let me believe that I'm making a difference every day in the work that I do. I lost my uncle when he was 14 years old. He was hit and killed by a drunk driver. Uh, my mom was less than a year old and never got to know her uncle and or her brother, who was my uncle, and it uh, changed her family for forever. I lost my best friend to someone um, under the influence of drugs when I was 11 years old. Um, and the stories go on and on. I'm sure if you think about it, you have had someone in your life or you know someone in your life who's been impacted by traffic crashes um, or drug or alcohol use. And um, it's a really difficult thing. So I, I hope that each of you can find something to do in your jobs when you grow up that you are as passionate about as I am and that you love your work. Because when you love your work, it's not work. It's something that you get to do every day. I do need your help though. Um, when you do get into a car, even if you guys are fourth, fifth, sixth graders and you're not driving yet, 
I would encourage you to look around and see if everyone is wearing their seatbelt. That is a really easy, simple thing that you can do. Remind the people that you're with, if they're not wearing their seatbelt, to put their seatbelt on. And you can always buckle up even if the people around you aren't. And if you're one of those kiddos who should maybe still be in a booster seat and you're not, think about asking to get your booster seat out again. The activity that you will be doing um, here in just a few minutes, we'll be looking at crash forces, and that's a really important topic.